Hi, so you were trying to work out this integral. So initially you had x over here, <clears throat> but I just brought in the x into this side so that this makes much more clear, right? So I, I, I looked at your answer and I think where you got wrong is that <clears throat> you failed to actually adjust the limits of your integrations, integration once you do the uh, variable change into what they actually have. So when you have some kind of uh, domain of integration like this, like <clears throat> it's kind of complicated, I would recommend that you throw out the domain of integration. So what you have basically is something like this. So you have want to have x going from 0 to 1, right? That's the, what the initial limits say. And then your y, so here is 1 and this is 0. And y is supposed to vary along this, along y, the y axis from 0 to x, which is basically saying that you are actually interested in this graph. This is your upper limit of y. So this is, um, So this is your domain of integration. So not that. So this this um, line is y equals x. So your y is starts from zero and moves all the way up to x. So that's what you have the second integral. So you're basically going to um, work on this uh, domain of integration, and we'll see how we could move around this. Right. So. Okay, so you correctly did this r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. Right. right. And then the Jacobian for change of variable is r change of variable. Right. So this all, all this you computed correctly. And let me see what change. How, how this would change. So y equals x, this angle here is going to be pi over 4, 45 degrees, right? So it's basically like y equals x is basically dividing this first quadrant into half. So it's going to be half of pi over 3. That is pi over 4. So the angle is going to go from this to pi over 4, 0 to pi over 4. And your r, so r is going to start at zero, okay, and then it will all the way extend up to this point. This is your r. So if your angle is theta, let's say it's theta, this r here, so your cosine theta is equal to one. One is this length down here, one, so that is your adjacent. And your hypotenuse is R in this case, in this triangle, okay? This triangle angle, right? So the R will be going from one, from zero to one of cosine theta, which is we also write as secant theta. Right? So this is you're going to be your new limits. And once you do this, you have R cosine theta for X and square root of X squared plus Y square is R. And then you have R dr d theta. And then what you get is 0 pi over 4, 0 secant theta, R cubed, cosine theta, dr d theta. Okay, so let's move, work this out. So we can just move this cos secant theta out. 4 cos secant theta. And we have 0 to secant theta, R3, we are right? So 0, 5, 4, this will be 1, so we have cosine theta, and then R4, 4, 4, this whole thing from 0 to secant theta, right? D theta. Okay, um, so when you work this out, you have 
theta and one over four secant q secant four theta d theta. Right. So I'm running out of time. Or well, sorry, running out of space. Let me change, remove this stuff, and then proceed further. Right. We have zero, five over four. I can take the one more four outside, and then I have secant q. Secant q theta, right? So now we need to have integrate secant q theta. That itself is another exercise. Well, let's do it, right? So let me just i equals zero pi over four. Secant q to be eight. Right. Not that this is zero pi over four. Secant theta. Secant square theta d theta. So secant square theta is so. Let me just press this box. So secant square theta is the derivative of tan theta, right? So using integration by parts, we have secant theta tan theta by four. Let me just erase this stuff here. Okay, so we have this and zero pi over four. So now we need to just find the derivative of secant theta. So the derivative of secant theta is the secant theta tan theta. Right, so we have secant theta. Then the tan theta from the earlier part, then we have this. So we have, so we'll get in this um, zero um, see at zero, this is one, and this is zero, so this is zero, it's going to be one. So this is pi over four, tan theta is one, and secant theta is square root of square root of two. And over here we have secant theta tan square theta d theta. Okay. And this will be interesting this part because secant theta we have instead of tan square theta we can write so uh, one plus tan square theta is equal to secant and theta, right? So we can, instead of tan square theta, we can write secant theta minus one d theta. So we have, just try to place this one. And with this one going away. And with, so let's write it like this. So we have square root of two minus zero by four. Just draw this out. We have secant q of t. Theta, the theta, now plus zero pi of four secant theta d theta. So this is the same as i. So we can write. So I'm just writing it over here. I equals 
product of 2 minus i plus 0 pi over 4 secant theta d theta, right? So, we can just move this out here 2i is part of 2 plus 0 pi over 4 secant theta d theta, right? Okay, so now it's time to write this out. So we have y plus well two. Plus zero point four secant theta d theta and secant theta, the integral of secant theta if I'm not so I'm not mistaken. It's um, Theta, 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 so we have i equals power of 2 plus ln and theta plus tan theta 0 to pi 4. So this is power of 2 plus ln uh, at second, second theta at i over 4 is power of 2 theta and theta 1. Minus ln plus zero second theta is one plus tan theta is zero. So this will be zero. So i is one half square root of two plus ln square root of two plus one. So this is basically. 0 by 4 secant cube theta d So your answer would be 1 over 8, which is this one. Square root of 2 and then square root of 2. 